what's different basically about this pattern. I mean, I normally would tie it with bucktail, but I'm going to use Rhea, which is basically a type of, basically an emu or ostrich type of type bird. Uh, very mobile fibre and really strong. Uh, I'm going to use it in natural white, olive, and there is an actual grey in the rear. And I, as you can see, I've dyed it as well. I mean, this is a light or a pale olive. And dyed the same feather, but uh, obviously the natural grey black gives you that darker side. And this I'm going to use for dyeing, basically, you can put the fibres on it. As well, two large. These are cock hackles. Just from a neck. That's a neck I've got. The reason I'm using the neck is because the tips are really coming to a nice fine point. They may be using something else. I mean the saddle's good as well, but I've got one of these big capes, so there's one of these necks, and I want to use it up. So that's the feathers there. The tail the tail's made up basically of ultra lace. And the ultra lace comes is it here. It's just a clear tubing but you get it different colours and you can mark it, huh? mark this one and as you can see in the tail of this is CDC feathers, just large CDC feathers and I've trimmed the tip out, stuck the stem, the clear or the the, the bare of the stem, put it inside and use the UV to hold it. Now you were saying is that strong? No it is strong. So basically give you an idea I'm gonna try and destroy this one. Now I'm gonna pull and as you can see, all that pulling and stretching, it's absolutely, it's solid. So it's not going to pull out. It's just held in with a, a UV resin. It's very simple to do. Now to form the tail, as you can see on here, now the reason I use CDC feathers is they basically stay open really well and they give a nice effect with the fibres nice and straight and uh, with the fine fibres in between each length it opens, it keeps it really well. You'd be surprised how well that looks and I, I don't know if you're sure but I mean if you've ever fished and the first thing I see in a lot of the, the fry and so the different types of fish in the sea, you the first thing I notice is the tail and it's certainly worth putting it on as an aiming point or some sort. Now, it's something you can try. You can leave it out if you don't like it, but it is fun to try. Now, I've got two large CDC feathers. Now, the first thing to do is line them up so that the natural curve comes in and meets. So, they're coming in and meeting flat. And then, what I do then is take away bottom fibres. Just basically, just slightly trim them at an angle. basically pointed a wee bit and then take the tip out now the CD the CDC feathers are actually very strong uh, you'd be surprised how strong the stems are and there basically is your, is your tail that's it ready and you can really see it but it's ready to go on tie and fly now the tubing now when you see in the pack, it comes in a, usually coiled up like this. Now what, what I do is actually stretch it. And it will stretch out and hold it straight. And then basically you'll see it's nice, it's actually a lot thinner. But what I do then is use a hairdryer to bring it back, slightly bring it back, but keep it straight and allow it to the heat uh, to cool down. And you'll find that this stays perfect. So, and that's the way I get the, the tubing ready. Now, to basically put the, the tail on, it's really quite simple. Uh, just stick the two stems in together. Just set them on. I mean, obviously, you can't have them too thick. If they're slightly out of zinc, don't worry. You can put one in at a time. Just got to basically push them in see that they're lined up and then that would slide up to the CDC feathers which gives you the tail. Now what I like to do is just basically make sure it's nice and neat. Get your UV resin 
and then basically right at the very the top where it comes into the tubing just a tiny bit, this is a light UV resin it's got to be the light stuff just sit it on the feather and you'll basically what happens is it starts to seep in so I'm doing it both sides just lift it up push it in you can encourage the, the resin to go in get a small bead at the bottom and then you can set the resin. The resin is inside all the way around and that's how you form the tail and right there you can see how how strong it is. I mean that will really not pull out and uh, it's really nice and tight, strong. And that's how the tail's formed. And then we're ready to tie it in. Now to tie the tail on, just using a 6 o white thread. The hook I'm using, this is just a partridge hook I've got. It's uh, basically for tube flies. But it's, a, it's one the friend likes. He likes to use this hook. Um, this is obviously the silver one, but you can use any salt water style hook that you use normally for tying any salt water flies. Uh, so don't really look at this as a, it's just one I like to use. So what we do is, first thing is just to make it a wee bit stronger and give the thread more grip. A wee bit of super glue on the, on the shank. And then wind the thread from the eye down. I lay the thread all the way along. So just about in line with the barb of the hook. Then remove the waist piece. Now to tie our tail on, all we need to do, I mean it's quite simple to tie the tail. Length, we just have to get the length for the fly that we're tying. Now, uh, this is a 6 inch fly so I've got the measure there for the 6 inch. So, turn about there. Tie it on top. It's going to check. Get your ruler out. It's always best to see what the length is. And uh, check the size. Check the length. Towards the end of the tail. That's fine. That'll do it. And then we just basically make sure that the tail's basically straight, square. And then we tie it in. That's why I tie it in at the bottom and then work my way up. The tubing sits in really well, you can't you can't go wrong with the tubing tires. Basically on the body. Kind of quite short there, so I don't want it to build up the head too much. Sometimes you do, so take it all the way up, it's up to yourself. Now we tie in a bit of flash. Mirror flash is good in olive, blue, any colour like that. Mirror flash is just a nice mobile flash that works really well. Um, but that's the length of the tubing it's on, not not into the tail, but just the length of the tubing. Just on the way back down, it's quite simple to tie it on. And see the wee smaller tips, or smaller ends, just fold them back and wind down. This will give you a nice mix of length on the actual the flash, they're all different lengths, and that's what you're looking for. Now, for the tail, we're using, as I said, uh, the badger, cock hackles. Yeah, I'm going to come out a wee bit so you can see this, the length. So, here's we've got the two feathers here. Just line them up one against the other, make sure the tips are lined up. Just take your time at this point, making sure they're right. And look for the natural curve of the feather. See how they're going to sit. Obviously if the curve's going up the way, you don't want that, you want it to come down into the, the tail. And you just want the tip to reach, see the beginning of the tail, just slightly on it. So we get our measurement, what we want, and then we can take away any of the fibres to reveal the stem. You can put them on individually or together, it's up to yourself. 
Yeah, I'm putting them in, tying them on with two or three loose turns. Just to get it started. And uh, they're in line with the shank of the hook. Now the reason for tying them at the back and not further up, this helps to stop the tail wrapping the hook. It doesn't always stop it, but it does help a wee bit. And once you're happy with the length, you can basically then make sure it's secure. You take the thread all the way up, tying in. Got to make sure these are tied in. That's fine. So basically, if you were tying this fly, you wouldn't have. You could tie it without the the ultra lace and the tail, which it works. I mean, it still works. This is just another way of doing it. Now, for the body, I'm just going to use this as a a fritz that I get for for venues a company here in the UK. It's a 25 mil UV fritz. It's ideal for a fly like this. You can use a dubbin. You could use like angel hair or use like light bright any of these now what I'm gonna do is just basically look at the natural fibers though the fun no natural fibers but the way they're sitting flowing so basically flowing towards the back which is here now to stop it unraveling what I like to do is melt the end <laughs> just watch your fingers just blow it that stops it basically coming loose then we want to tie this in the way down yeah, I'm just going to come in a wee bit further so you can see what I'm doing. Now we can just catch it on the side. And then we just wind down nice and tight. All the way down. And we bring our thread back up. That's what this does, gives the body a bit, a bit of body in the fly, holds it out, gives it a lot more of a teardrop shape. And that's the idea behind it, getting that nice teardrop shape. Now when we're winding up, just doing a, a turn in front of the other and drawing back the fibres, synthetic fibres as we go. Just forms a nice nice shape, so if you take your time. Now if you want, you can just rub, take it up quite quick, make it sparse, it's up to yourself. I basically want it to be quite quite dense. Or as I say you could use any sort of flash type dubbing whatever you have. So right to that point there, and across your thread and tie it down. Get half a dozen turns in there and then trim away. Just draw back any fibres going forward, just draw them back. Now what I'm going to do here at the head area is just basically when I'm tying off certain things I'm going to put some super glue on the thread and wind over it. This just makes for a nice strong head. And then that's it, ready. And that there, there's then your hackles on. Then we're going to form more of the body of the the fly and we use the rear. Now originally this I tied this fly with just bucktail. Now I'm just gonna use the, the rear in this case. This is a natural white. And I'm just gonna use some of the larger ones first. Now I've got a new one here so we have to use it. We'll use the, the ones further up. Now in this feather here you can see some of the short on one side long on the other. So we'll use the one side for the the long fibers. All I'm doing is basically bring them away from the feather. Get the scissors and come in as close to the stem and then turn them away. You've got a kind of natural taper there. And then what I'm gonna do is roll it round. Now you want these fibers the tips just to come short of the, the tail. And what I'm going to do is just roll this, or encourage the fibres all the way around. Now you could put some top and bottom, which would work. As I say, what you can use is bucktail if you haven't got the rear. This is just the fly I want to try with the rear, a version of it. 
Let's have a wee check, see where the where it's sitting. No, it's, I'm happy enough with that. I don't want to overdo it because I've got quite a few fibers to put on it. I'm going to add a bit of flash. As I say, what I'm going to do is just put some super glue on the thread and then wind, tie down the cut ends. Get some more flash. Then I'm going to use a micro straggle. That's what I have. No micro straggle, a micro crystal flash. A couple of strands of that. And then a couple of strands of the same mirror flash which I put in the tail. Short the length of the, the rear. I'm giving different lengths. And I'm putting some on the top and some on the bottom. Just going to trim the, the micro crystal flash. A better length. There we go. Slowly building up the body or the, the teardrop shape. Now I'm going back to my white rear. And I'm going to put some on the underside, so I'm going to the shorter side. Uh, quick look. Well, it's the same amount of the fibres, just enough to give the impression of the to help form the taper. Now, do one about maybe. Let's just recheck the length. So the tips go halfway into the tail. Pinch and loop up the way. Tie it on. Trim away the excess, and then again we touch super glue. It just makes for a stronger fly if you do that. Now here's the rear. Now, this is a the natural grey black dyed the golden olive, and this is a white. Now we basically want a mix of the two. So I'm going to what I'm going to do is just grab some of the the lighter stuff first. So if you've not a lot of fibres, enough just to form a basically a light underwing. You trim away the waist at the bottom here and then tie it on the top. Then I'm going to get some of the, the darker. Yeah. Let's grab a few of the fibres. I'm slightly longer. Again, I'm just going to grab a few trim. Look at the natural shape. I'll try and keep the natural shape anyway. On the top. Just going to trim this so you can see what I'm doing. Tight, just look at the way the material is. It's looking okay. And then just leave a moisture in here to hold it. Just gonna run some thread or some super glue onto the thread again and tie in these cut ends. Just take your time. Just nice and tight. Now when you show you a bit more on here, just the way back up. Tidy the thing, tidy the area up, and then I'm going to put it finish. Okay, I'm always thinking of the shape of the head. And there we go, we're getting ready for our eyes. Now I've got my, my eyes here, these are a small holographic eye. Now what I do is just these are the, just the flat holographic ones. Now to make them 3D, you just put some resin on the top. Just get some light resin. It's quite simple. Just to form your own th sort of 3D type eye, just a bit of a wee drop on the top of the eye, and then obviously come in and set the resin, and that's you. Very easy. 
No, obviously we need two. Just gonna hold it on the side. These are sticky, so we'll get it started. Oops, I the wrong one off. Changes the look of the fly straight away whenever you do this. This will hold until you put some resin on. Nice and close to the, basically on the head and on the actual, the rear itself. And then you're happy with the position of the eyes, you've got to be happy with them. You can either use a, a regular or original resin. Just come in here with the, the regular. It should be a bit heavier. Take your time so it's touching the eye. With the resins you can actually move the, get your dubbing needle. And you can move it around a bit, it gives you time. If you use the light up here, it runs into the feathers, you watch. Get your torch, and you're happy. Looks not too bad, we'll set the resin. Then do the underside. Just watch, don't get too many bubbles in it. Okay, and set the resin. And then, I usually get the light at this point when I've got someone there just to get around and finish it off. I come slightly onto the eyes. Excuse. And you're happy with the shape of the head, and you can come in with the, the torch. Set the resin. There we are. It's quite a simple fly to tie, really. I mean, it looks a lot. But once you've had a, tied a few, I mean, you've got everything ready, it's, you, you can fly along and tie a few. Now, I always like to, once the resin set, put a very fine coat of varnish on it. All the way around. This will seal the resin. So if there's any tackiness in it, this will take it away. And there we are. So, you see a nice shape, I'll just come out a bit so you can see the old fly, there we are, very mobile, and uh, the tail, surprising how well that works, uh, I mean i tied it for many years, I used to tie small fry patterns with it, uh, for rainbow trout believe it or not, uh, in the lochs, and I used a material called chickaboo, and it worked extremely well, but Anyway, this is just a bigger version of that for this for the salt water. So I mean you can tie them slightly darker, you can there's one here which I've used some of the darker badger. Or you can just make it pure white. It's the tie that too slightly bigger. So good fun to tie. This one a wee bit a wee bit lighter and dressed, just slightly lighter. Again. Good fun, and colours is up to you, this is just a style, style of what we like.